Hi everyone, welcome to Samju Learning. This is Rohit Dagar. This is the Samju's talk show, episode two. We have a very special guest with us. She is Sasya Reddy, All India Rank two one four, UPSC Civil Services twenty twenty one. We've been knowing her over the last two years. She has been associated with us through the Samju's uh, program and uh, our internship. She's been part of our team, and I've known her personally and through my team over the last two years. And I know how. she has struggled over her three years and eventually you know came out victorious we will look at her story and we'll talk to her understand the progress that she made over her entire journey and what worked for her and what didn't first of all sasya congratulations and uh, welcome you, to the samjo's talk show this episode is special and i wanted you to be a part of it because as i was discussing with you I, uh, Sasya was the first person that I looked for in the list this year because I was really hopeful that she would get into the list. Looking at her performance over the last one one and a half years, I was very you know optimistic that uh, this girl would make it this year or the next year. No one can be absolutely sure. No one can be sure what rank would you get and uh, whether you would be absolutely in the list this year or not. But I was sure that she would make it if she keeps on going over the next one or two years. She would be in the list one day or the later. And uh, it was immense pleasure for me when I finally found her name and I immediately asked my team members, you know, to ask her and confirm if it's you. And when she confirmed, we had a roll number also, but. when she confirmed we were totally excited that sasya has finally made it so it was such a personal thing to you know check sasya's result so congratulations sasya and uh, we'll start with the entire process this has to be a very informative session as we have decided that uh, we'll try to deliver as much information and uh, in you know important information to the students as we can so that uh, they can derive immense value out of it we will look at uh, different stages of the exam one by one uh, we'll look at uh, your three years preparation journey and we'll look at prelims mains and interview whatever we can extract out of it and uh, hopefully students would enjoy it if you have any you know uh, comments that you would like to share with us simply write down in the comment section and uh, we'll be reading it and hopefully we'll try to answer it if we can if there are some coin common queries in future So, Sasya, first of all, we'll start with your uh, preparation journey. Uh, yes, as I know, you've given three attempts, right? This was your third attempt. Yes. And uh, yes. I know about your second and third attempt because we got to know you in 2020. But uh, please start with your first attempt. And before that, if you could uh, share the background journey. I mean, why uh, you decided to opt for civil services? When did you think of preparing for the exam? And your educational background, if you can. Please. Yes, sir. So I graduated in two thousand nineteen. Uh, my stream was civil engineering. It's a VNR VJIT college. It's a college in Hyderabad, yeah. autonomous college to JNTU. So I actually it's four years of preparation, sir. I started in two thousand eighteen itself. Um, I, I like everyone. I just took engineering. I went with the flow and took engineering. Uh, but then in third year. till second year i was not sure what i would do in future what i would become but then in my third year i sat and i i gave a thought like what i should become what should be my career so in that sense in that at that time i had in childhood uh, we have heard about this collector post here it's uh, and i remember my grandfather showing me this collector office so all this i could recall and uh, i i like the syllabus also actually i wanted to read after my engineering i wanted to read all the subjects polity history i was very much interested so both converged actually my interest in the subjects and my interest towards the uh, service that i can contribute in some way to the uh, delivery of the services is very much important so both of them converged and uh, then i actually it was a difficult decision for me because always we used to think like after engineering should get some job but uh, not sitting for placements and uh, we we often hear how difficult this uh, and uncertain this exam is but then still somehow uh, for me it was very difficult decision but then i took it and once i have taken this uh, decision there was no looking back uh, 2018 i started this preparation and immediately um, one month after my college i gave my attempt 
it's so, uh, one month after that my will be first attempt but, yeah first attempt but preparation was for one year uh, simultaneously with the college right so, so uh, first year uh, first attempt uh, first attempt i cleared prelims sir okay. uh, but uh, i was very much prepared for prelims but uh, what mistake i did was i was not uh, i did not do answer writing practice i was not very much prepared with the mains so obviously i did not qualify means but but then like i got seven around 700 marks so for first attempt and without any answer writing practice uh, it gave me boost but also i felt i did a big mistake by not uh, practicing had, had i practiced at least if i had scored at least 10 marks more in each, each subject i would have uh, cleared mm -hmm. then only uh, but yeah that was the miss. that was that how our first attempts and then what happened in the next attempt <laughs> yeah so yeah in first attempt also uh, with the very less marks i cleared but then second attempt i was uh, confident for prelims and i was preparing for june prelims but then as we know this pandemic came four months exam postponed lot of uncertainties uncertainties even at my home we had some issues so uh, and i did not practice for csat as i cleared in first attempt i lost in csat uh, okay. in first prelim yeah in first paper i got 20 marks above general cut off that is 112 but uh, it was a disaster that i lost in csat it was very hard breaking very painful right so uh, even after scoring 112 in your gs1 paper uh, the first paper you could not clear csat in your second attempt right yes. and then uh, in the third attempt you managed for both the papers yeah yeah so uh, how was your uh, you know support from family and friends over this entire three year journey uh, yes sir my mother supported me a lot starting from taking this decision of not sitting for placements and how uncertain and uh, it's for example they uh, when i cleared first prelims they obviously bought chocolates and all but even i failed also they bought it's not the, it's not just only when i when i succeed they celebrated my success but even i fail they encouraged me and uh, for second attempt and third attempt also uh, my mom was like uh, since you cleared in first prelims only and you had a lot of interest uh, please continue doing this only don't divert so that how she she kept me in this path only and uh, and i did not divert to any other thing like to, uh, looking for any other job or anything i was in this preparation only and this is one thing that you know even um, the viewers who are watching the video would want to ask you see there was this phase where you were clearing prelims then next year when you were working on mains hoping that uh, there were some mistakes in your mains preparation and answer writing in your first attempt you would want to obviously improve on that and focus on that more and then suddenly that shock of not clearing csat because csat paper over the last 2 3 years has become more and more difficult students deserving students uh, candidates mm -hmm. have been facing issues with csat only and they have good preparation for gs for prelims and mains and what not option and everything so after that when you gave uh, your prelims this year it again uh, you know got uh, delayed supposed to happen and then it happened in october just like 2020 so this time now you must have been you know aware of uh, the problems that you faced last year and then you worked on um, your csat as well but yes. if you look at your marks there has been some divergence i mean some deviation uh, one time you scored 112 next time you scored 88 although the paper was difficult but uh, the the thing that i want to touch upon is that students generally believe that if you are scoring above 100 or 110 you would consistently do it over years that is something that does not happen in the real world it totally depends on the paper you have to attempt questions on merit sometimes it is slightly easier for you sometimes it is easier for everyone sometimes it is easier for you you might have prepared for something four five questions uh, could appear easier to you which are difficult for other people and you might gain 10 12 marks extra and um, sometimes it is difficult for everyone so uh, what was your uh, what is your take on this i mean can this deviation happen to almost everyone and uh, what suggestion would you give to students who miss the cut off who 
are obviously deserving candidates who've been preparing really well for the exam. And let's say there's a sudden shock and they are scoring 80 in GS or not clearing CSAT like in your case in the second attempt. What advice would you give? Should they quit the preparation, which is the first thing that comes to their mind that we've been preparing for two, three years? Chodo yaar, nahi ho pa hai. Or they should continue and understand there's one more thing that they have to work on over the next year other than their mistakes and trouble spots that they already have. Just complete that bucket list. Uh, yes, sir. as uh, this shows one, one, two in one attempt, like that is 20 marks above general cutoff yes. and getting just exactly general cutoff. Yes. So uh, this this shows how uncertain Pulin's exam is. And I don't, even I don't have any explanation for that. Actually, mm, same preparation, same tactics, same amount of, uh, same number of questions. Everything is same. In fact, my, I should say my knowledge levels increased, but unfortunately my marks decreased. As you said, uh, difficulty is one thing, but it also shows uh, uncertainty about this exam. And as you asked, like uh, people who are, there are many people who miss the cutoff by 0.5 marks, one marks, even I personally know many such people. And even in CSAT, even I lost by two questions only. It's not like huge uh, margin. So for them, I want to say like, uh, believe in yourself and just continue. Like people who are getting very less marks, like 30s and 40s, they ne really need to rethink like what's what's uh, what's go really going wrong in their attempt. But people who are missing by little margin, they, they should be strong enough. And I was strong enough, like it really will feel bad. There will be uh, like, it will be very painful actually to miss the cutoff. But then uh, think that you are deserving and you, you it's just arm's length distance it is. So please try for the next attempt and never lose your hope. Uh, that's what I want to say. And uh, Sasha, you are fairly young, but um, there are so many uh, candidates who have given three, four attempts who are you know, at a uh, uh, more, they're more eight and uh, maybe 27, 28, 29. They have this pressure of, uh, you know, looking at other opportunities as well or people who have spent five, six attempts. Do you know someone, your friends or anyone or uh, you've experienced somewhere whether, uh, do you have any advice for them? Although you've given three attempts and uh, you know there, there is an immense pressure. There are so many girls uh, that, you know, I've got, uh, DM red messages over Instagram and Telegram where they have this issue that their family are pressurizing them to quit this exam and move on with their life, you know, get settled or you know, get a job and so many things. And uh, there are also boys, men who uh, face the same pressure. So do you have any advice for them? Uh, yes, sir. E even I don't have any direct pressure from my mother or anyone, but then their expectations itself were the source of pressure. Like four years I'm waiting. Right. And even though I'm, I graduated recently only, but uh, for my situation, it's important for me to get a job. So not settling and uh, preparing this for itself is a kind of uh, pressure for me only. And I can imagine what uh, people like 27, 28 might be feeling. So um, for them, I just want to say, uh, maybe if, if it's very difficult, take don't leave. First of all, if you are re really interested, never leave it because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like after 32, you can't, mostly you can't write also. So if it's very difficult, if, if it's uh, feasible, take a break or uh, take a part -time uh, like, uh, yeah, part-time something, take a break or uh, we have many opportunities now online. So uh, even I did not look for any job or something, but I joined in Samjo because it's uh, similar to UPSC only so that I can work and also yes, continue correct. my preparation. So this advice I would give, try for any online opportunities, work from home opportunities, which is uh, similar to your preparation and continue. Right, so uh, Sasya, let us look at prelims now. And um, what was your strategy for prelims? If you can discuss it in brief, I mean, subject wise, your book list and did you look at any book which was out of the league not uh, the normal you know uh, referred uh, reference books what was your strategy for prelims subject wise if you can understand uh, there is no out of league books as such so normal preparation only but as, as i said i did not take any foundation coaching as such and i prepared completely from my home only I did not go to Delhi or neither in Hyderabad also we have this hub. I did not go there also. So I heavily relied on the online YouTube especially. But then I was very specific. Nowadays we have overload of material. I did not follow whatever 
comes in my way. I was very specific, which I could understand easily, which it suits me that only I selected. And for prelims in the initial days, I uh, first focused on understanding the concepts only. That's very important. I did not immediately rush into mocks, giving online mocks or, or online or offline any mocks. I focused on understanding the basic preparation. Obviously, we we and there won't never that point comes that we completed entire preparation. But then at some point, it will be it will be satisfactory that um, yes, we majority of the basics we have covered. At that point, it's important to start the mocks. So even I did that way. And I gave a lot of mocks for prelims, not too many also, but whatever I gave, I used to analyze each one of them. Like if, I, if one question goes wrong, I was like, why, why this question went wrong? And I used to go back and read that concept. So uh, that is very much important. And after some point of time, I sometimes I feel bored to revise everything from first to last page of the book. At that time also I used to give the mocks again, like this reverse engineering kind of thing I used to do. And what went wrong, that 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 time I feel very interesting to re read the concept which went wrong. So that is- so Can you name the uh, important books subject-wise so that you know, students can understand which books were you referring for each subject for prelims? Or was it uh, prelims specific or uh, the preparation? Checked wise, and then you you know uh, bifurcate when the exam came. Yes, books, normal books only, sir. I have seen the previous topics what they recommended, like Lakshmi Khan, Spectrum, NCRTs, uh, all these books only I bought. But then I can't say I solved only help with the help of those books. For example, Lakshmi Khan, I referred every time I refer for the basics and financial yeah. things. But then nowadays, with only Lakshmi Khan, you can't. Uh, uh, solve the polity questions you need concepts also so for that uh, our constitution network is their uh, ncrt book and then my political science knowledge also helped so i all those basic book list which toppers used to give i bought those only i did not uh, uh, bought any out of the league book which, but, which uh, specific but what book, I did, uh, which specific book sorry to interrupt you which specific book did you prepare you know you use for economy because this is a common question people generally don't find one good book for economy Economy again, online uh, videos were there, and uh, yes, those only. I did not refer any book, um, Runal sir. I referred that time, okay, online. <laughs> so, uh, let's move on to the next question, which is about newspapers. Because, um, for current affairs, some toppers and faculties they say that you know, uh, newspapers should be wholeheartedly, dedicatedly, religiously followed every single day. Some say that uh, you should focus on magazines and then other aspects of your preparation. So what would you say? Should it be newspaper only or magazines only or a combination of both? I did combination of both, sir. Like uh, newspapers are very important. No one can deny that. But sometimes newspaper reading daily becomes hectic. Like I couldn't complete daily newspaper. But then even on those days, uh, if I find any some editorial, which is uh, very much important for uh, my optional, especially, I used to bookmark it. And if it's a printed print version, I used to cut and keep it aside. So in that way, I used to do. Uh, and magazines also I used to refer, like especially index I used to go through. And if I find any important topics which I missed, then I used to cover. Like I used to do both, uh, but uh, I did, I couldn't, I, I, I can't say I did uh, both completely in my four years daily. I did. I can't so, say that. How many but hours uh, did you use to spend on your newspaper every day? Uh, newspaper. Some days, initially, I used to spend a lot of time. So I used to buy that uh, Hindu paper and sit with that. More than two hours it used to go. But somehow I felt uh, maybe that was since uh, that was initial days, I could not uh, understand how to read. That's how I couldn't complete. But um, later I got, uh, I understood what to read and what to leave. That uh, less than one hour I could uh, finish. And was this all year long or you would skip newspaper before prelims or any other time? Yes, uh, I used to like just uh, 10, 15 days before I used to skip sometimes. Uh, because obviously like question paper might be set by then. Uh, not many months before but few days before i used to leave both even for then if i felt like sorry sir both for prelims and mains right yes sir 
since paper would be set like i need to revise my optional i need to revise my notes so i couldn't get time for a newspaper and backlog again i used to complete after the exams and even sometimes if i don't feel like reading my notes i, I would just open and read the headlines or any editorial like that also I used to do so you made notes out of newspaper religiously or uh, you knew the important themes and the important notes that you would want to make and leave the rest for magazine so that you can identify and save time there uh, initially i made a mistake of doing uh, notes as it is sir. like i used to copy paste everything that i felt it's a waste of time again we will never get the time to read and revise those things so in last one year what i did was what i felt was extremely useful that only i um, copied and uh, made notes some something very attractive or something very useful new concepts those only i used i made notes but uh, not the entire thing so i would advise everyone don't copy paste everything it will be pure waste of time right so what about uh, prelims test series i mean what do you think is prelim test series absolutely required and uh, at what point of time should one practice questions in for the prelims uh, exam i mean it sh should it be over the last two months uh, for full length test only or it should be an year long process when you are reading a subject and then taking sectional tests and slowly gradually finding your mistakes and improving upon them what is your take on this uh test series is very much important sir especially if it's first attempt they have to give compulsorily few mocks offline because at home it will be very much comfortable that uh, we we won't be adjusted to that exam environment so the only for the first attempt i went to that offline centers and wrote few tests but after that since i got uh, i know how the exam environment would be after next attempts i i completely gave online uh, uh, and i used to buy the papers and those omr sheets and i practice at home only and as i said for me uh, i don't want to revise again and again when i felt uh, revision would be boring i used to give tests only and uh, then learn from them so and how it's not important how many tests you give rather each test you give should be analyzed very well that is very much important mindlessly giving tests and simply uh, seeing how many score how much score you got it doesn't serve any purpose so, yes, so this is, this is can... something really important uh, so i can interrupt yeah. again this is something really important i mean how did you analyze your mistakes in each mock test you've given a mock test let's say you've got any random score it could be 70 80 90 or maybe 120 so how would you analyze your mistakes would you just analyze your incorrect questions or your skipped and correct questions as well uh, so first thing is um, initially i would be i used to be affected by the how much how much marks i used to get in the uh, mock test but at the end actually mock test score i did not uh, bother much about it and but uh, i used to analyze correct question incorrect question the options also actually each and every question will give exam for 2 hours but uh, some days uh, analyzing paper only would take me half day or one day also because uh, uh, so how i would approach is first obviously incorrect questions i'll select and i'll see why it went incorrect mm. and i'll i'll write down the reasons for some questions it might be i did not read the question only properly for some i don't know the concept so there would be various reasons for various questions i used to note down them and after i'm done with all the uh, incorrect questions then i would go for skipped questions then then i would also not leave the questions which i which were went correct uh, i would all, i would also analyze why i why this i went correct and those options also would be important actually yes. so those options if you are watching this they must understand this is something really really important because when you are attempting a test there is there are three possibilities either you have done the question correct incorrect or you skipped see incorrect and skipped is something which generally students look and they understand what went wrong and everything because that is uh, your main concern at the moment but the question that you marked correct there could be possibilities it could be a fluke it could be informed guessing or you believe that this is right but it was randomly you know something else happened and you got it correct and you didn't even look at it so in those cases also there could be a possibility that you knew two statements and didn't know one of the statements you should go back and look what was that that you didn't know for that question that you even got correct this way you 
feed your subconscious in a way that if that statement is the pivotal point in a question in the actual exam, you'll be able to get it right. So uh, one should focus on all the aspects of each questions when you're uh, you know analyzing a paper, spending uh, two hours, three hours, four hours in the beginning on your sectional tests, analyzing your mistakes. There's no harm in that. When you get into full length test, that uh, analyzing ability would improve and you'll automatically save time there because you would have revised a lot of things. And then you would immediately look at your silly mistakes only because those are the ones that can cost you an attempt. Students generally make five or six or seven silly mistakes, 2.6 marks, 2.66 marks lost for each question that you've committed silly mistakes in. That could really cost you an attempt. So uh, these are the things that you, when you spend time with your test, you eventually understand where you are missing out and slowly and gradually you can improve on it. So this is all about uh, prelims and uh, let's move on to means. So your preparation for prelims and means was on a single track together, right? And then later on, when the exam approached, you uh, started working on specifically on uh, the prelims or the mains exam. Uh, in first attempt, I did a mistake of not focusing on mains so that costed me heavily. Yes. But then after later attempts, I understood the importance of doing both simultaneously. Obviously, when the exam approaches, that particular month will be in that if, if prelims is approaching, will be with the prelims mindset. So that's how it is. But in general, it's very important to go simultaneously with both the preparation. And uh, you've given a very good example where uh, you missed out on uh, good answer writing in your first attempt as well. Still, you could score well, but it does not happen with everyone in general. And um, so what would you, based on your mistakes and how you've learned it, uh, what would you suggest? To, what is the ideal time to start answer writing practice? Should it be from day one only when you've just started the book and, you know, uh, got your book from Amazon or Flipkart and you just started reading and you just, you know, begin with answer writing or you should wait for, you know, basic knowledge completion and you cover the subject once, at least once, and then you start writing and understand if you know it or not. Uh, from day one, writing answer writing would be silly, sir. Like we we could we, we, our answer will be very narrow, and just what we what lines we read that we'll write in the answer, and we won't we won't be able to address the demand of the question also. So day one is uh, not at all advisable, and but then you should not postpone just before the exam also. You should not postpone after the prelims also. As you said, once uh, completing the basic syllabus, that's the time to write. That time also initially we'll write very worst answers. With time, we'll improve our answers. So in the middle of the preparation, it's be better to start the answer writing, neither extremes. And um, uh, there's one uh, question that I would like to ask you. Let's say uh, out of the 20 questions in GS that you're attempting, GS 1, 2, 3, and so on, uh, how many questions were there that if either you skipped or uh, you didn't know good answers to it and just scribbled at the end or was there a lack of time at the end? Were there answers that you could not do justice to and how many? Yes, sir. every answer we could not uh, write with 100% satisfaction. Uh, but I did not leave any question also this time, in, not in any paper. That that was the main goal uh, before entering the exam hall. I used to tell myself I, I should attempt 20 questions. Obviously, if it's completely out of syllabus, when, when we never heard of the topic itself, we should, I told I should not attempt that, self, that uh, question because it will be bluffing and nothing else. But fortunately, there was no questions like that this time. Everything, something or the other, I knew. Um, but uh, yeah, last few four or five questions, they, they'll be just uh, like scribbling only, sir. Um, this time, for example, GS1, in, there was a question on gig economy and its impact on women, or something like that. So that uh, I, I could not manage time. And uh, when Invigilator told it's, it's only one minute, that time I started that question. So I just wrote half page or three fourth page, I guess. So it happens, uh, but never deliberately don't leave any question because it's important to uh, attempt all questions and don't live in this imagination also that we'll write all questions very neatly, very satisfactorily. That won't happen at all. Examination, will, uh, that hall sitting in the hall will be like a battlefield only. Like in seven minutes, uh, it will happen just like that. The three hours, we don't know how they went by also. 
so try to write that fast see the reason why i asked this and the previous two questions is that um, this is called firefighting i mean when you are you are short on time you have uh, adequate information and skill to attempt that question but still you're scribbling and you know you won't get very good marks in this particular question that is firefighting and uh, students generally believe uh, and there are certain you know toppers of faculty who uh, tell students that uh, you should start answer writing from the first or second day itself because in that way you're preparing yourself for firefighting that is not firefighting because firefighting would be defined that you have knowledge you don't have time to write it and or maybe you don't have adequate knowledge but at least you know the context of the question you won't be able to write good answers but uh, at least you have some knowledge to write four or five points or maybe build some context in the question and then you'll have to skip it because you have to move on to the next question that is firefighting if you don't have knowledge you're not doing justice to the question and the evaluator in any case would realize and get to know that you are just you know uh bluffing around and uh, writing answers that make no sense to the question and your impression in the first few questions would be so bad that uh, eventually i don't believe that you'll get good, good uh, you know marks in the exam even if you manage to get to mains by just uh, you know uh, having poor knowledge the problem is that if you start writing in the beginning itself and you don't have adequate knowledge you don't read your books properly you tend to adapt to that way of writing answers and uh, even though you have acquired good knowledge you don't find enough ways to put it into your answer and you know uh, improve your answer writing skills so before uh, developing your skills one should have adequate knowledge at least medium knowledge 50% knowledge that can be used to acquire more knowledge and then uh, write answers so this is something that you've touched upon and this is a really good example so Uh, how would you generally uh, structure your answer because i would like to focus more on your answers and uh, your main abilities because i have seen over the last uh, two years that uh, you've been writing uh, you know very good uh, model answer you wrote model answers for the previous year questions for uh, 2020 exam as well and uh, they were very popular very high traffic um, they were being uh, used by some random telegram channels also but we said it's okay because there was no watermark but that is fine next year we had to put a watermark but uh, your answer writing abilities and your uh, you know samjo analysis post they were very very good so i knew that your main score has to be good you just have to clear prelims every time and you'll score good in mains and that was something when you had not practiced enough for mains so next year when you were practicing for mains what was your approach how would you structure an answer regarding answer writing my answers were very simple sir i followed the basic introduction uh, body and conclusion approach in introductions i either use the definitions which is simple definitions which i prepared beforehand or else um, i use the recent happenings regarding that question and regarding answers two things i kept in mind one is there should be proper flow in the answer and second thing is it should directly address the question and not beating around the bush and yeah and other tips regarding the answer writing completing the answer should not end abruptly uh, giving it proper conclusion obviously at the end for two three questions it might not happen but mostly i managed to give proper conclusion and uh, conclusions also i try to keep uh, not same hence it is this like uh, not it should not be same for same answer uh, all the answers there should be some little bit difference how i conclude that i ensured and i this time i i followed the top of copies and i used the boxes underlining little bit diagrams earlier i used to avoid all of this and answers would be very simple this time i little bit uh, i incorporated i did not overdo anything i did not uh, did not overdo and kept it simple improved on the presentation and also the content so students need to understand the important tips here that your answers should be simple you should not unnecessarily use jargons which are very difficult to understand for the common man and uh, you should keep your flow and structure uniform across the paper and uh, one should understand your identity your you know uh, your way of writing the answer and try to put information and articulate it in the best way possible as per your abilities and try to attempt as many questions as you can because missing out on 5 6 7 questions would obviously don't won't do uh, good to you and your marks try to understand that 
this entire score is based on multiple papers if you miss out on one question in gs1 doesn't really matter you can uh, you know make up to it in gs2 3 4 optional you can extract one one mark extra from all the papers and you'll make up for it so you don't have to panic in any of the paper even if uh, one paper is not uh, you know going really well and you feel that you won't be able to make to the list stay calm and keep uh, you know uh, giving your test in the best way possible and then wait for the results rather than panicking bit in the exam hall itself because generally i've seen students panicking when they give their first mains and gs1 paper in the last 15 to 20 minutes when they hear that sound pin drop silence and pen scribbling on that uh, you know table then they get that uh, you know emotion that uh, we are writing mains and this is a tough paper everyone is writing so well maybe i am you know lagging behind at that point of time one must remain calm and just focus on your answers because you can only write your own answers you can't prevent others from writing their answers the best that you can do is complete a paper on time this is a really good tip this was for mains and uh, what did you do for essay sasya because that is really important because i have seen your mark sheet all the marks are very consistent there is no uh, deviation as such uh, let's say uh, in one paper one is scoring 130 or 135 in the other they are scoring 70 80 it is very uniform near the 100 mark for every paper so for that there are two questions the first one is how did you work on essay and the second for ethics case studies and the third would be did you miss any subject can someone afford to miss a subject for mains or gs and then still manage to get good marks in the paper uh so as you said my marks were uh, uniform in all four subjects but then essay i must say i got less only like 110 is little bit less score compared to like few others got 130 140 so essay maybe i should have uh, practice much more but it's a decent score many others got 80s 90s also so what i did was uh, again this time for me the the uh, i could not understand some essays also like <laughs> some english words were like difficult for me also so i have selected the topic which i understood uh, because uh, i did not go for uh, it should be unique or it should be something i the topic i should understand that way i picked it and same i uh, for, regarding preparation mm. i did all the basic thing, things like i collected the quotes like i used to collect the stories from newspapers and yojana magazines and i heard the topper talks where they used to say this approach quality pestel p uh, so i kept all these approaches in my mind but the kind of questions were completely different they were kind of philosophical so in my essays again i ensured there should be flow from each paragraph to another paragraph and it should be simple i went into lot of explanation thing rather than simply writing but i also ensured that i should touch, touch different areas and not focus on only one area uh, that's how i did sir so you were trying uh, to make an essay of... as comprehensive as you can and uh, converging different topics and uh... giving some variation to the essay so uh, there's one problem that generally students feel who write uh, mains i have listened to this problem a number of times where uh, they do not spend uh, you know almost equal time on both the essays those who are new to the preparation uh, you must know that uh, in essay you get two essays um, you have uh, to write 1250 words on each essay approximately and uh, you must give equal attention to both the essays because you can't spend you know uh, two hours on one and then a leftover portion with the other essay how did you manage you know giving equal importance to both the essays and not just for the first one yes so that's very important i from starting of my man uh, starting the exam i kept in my mind that uh, 50% time 50% time so i i constantly check the uh, watch and uh, when it's uh, half of the time is about to complete i concluded the first essay and i went uh, with the second that's very important because both uh, carry equal marks and we should not get into that emotional mode and uh, write one essay if we, if we write and should go on writing and neglect the second one that would uh, negatively impa- impact on the marks so 50% time is very much important. so uh, once you have decided in the first few minutes that these are the two essays that you're going to write would you spend some time creating a structure at the back end of your sheet or you would simply just uh, keep everything in your mind and then start writing the essay 
uh, i uh, small flow chart i did sir like some people uh, almost uh, write the lines also what they would write in their say i did not uh, do to that extent but yes i uh, what all the topics i need to touch upon the side headings type all those i uh, wrote in the, i used the rough pages for that uh, for few minutes i spent on that because that is very much important if not we we'll start the essay and uh, we don't know in what direction we are going and uh, in between we can't change it uh, so we become too much directionless and hapsad we become so few minutes i spent on how to write right. those students who have uh, not written mains yet or uh, are in the initial stages of the preparation might feel how can um, you know a topper say that uh, i have some idea of the flow and on the basis that i can write an essay see when you are in the final uh, mode of your preparation going towards mains you prepare in such a way such a rigorous way that one keyword can help you expand it in a way that you can write a good 200 250 words so instead of articulating everything in your architecture only and spending about 25 30 minutes students who are writing mains who have prepared really well tend to write keywords in their architecture so that on the basis of that they can simply expand and then connect also because it is everything is there in the subconscious they have written answers they have written essay they have prepared notes for those keywords from the topics from the syllabus that they know how to interlink them if the situation demands so there's nothing to be worried about it when you approach means you'll automatically learn these things so this is normal for everyone right so this was about essay and um, did you make uh, notes specifically theme wise for mains or there were different notes uh, topic wise for the static portion as mentioned in the syllabus and then their important theme based uh, topics which were relevant for this year yes in first attempt i made a mistake of uh, not preparing notes properly and i did not go through the syllabus also properly for mains we have a defined syllabus unlike prelims so for this time what i did i took each topic and um, either uh, online notes or uh, some some in my notebook also i uh, took that each word as a topic and prepared according to it um, that's very important because questions would come from that only we would uh, unlike prelims prelims it became like uh, we, we, we don't know from where questions are coming also but still somewhat means they are still following the syllabus i feel little bit so um it's very important so those who are in the beginning stage of their preparation i would advise uh, see the syllabus once and uh, prepare notes uh, create notes for each topic in the syllabus and uh, uh, write the static content under it and also add the current affairs to it only rather than uh, completely isolating or separating both of them because when you write the final answer you need to incorporate both in your answer so if they are together in your notes itself you can easily reproduce in your exam as well yes, this is really important because if students can learn to identify the important themes that are in news over the last 10 12 14 months and uh, keep them as concise as possible and have strong grip over their uh, static uh, coverage topic wise from gs 1 to 3 and 4 and everything there are high chances that you will be uh, seeing uh, 75 to 80 percent papers on predicted lines and uh, there won't be any shock or you know uh, problem in the paper because there might be possibility that the scenario of that question might be twisted where you have to converge multiple topics in a way but at least you'll know the theme you'll know the basic concepts that you have to write there and uh, uh, you'll not miss out on anything so it is very important to stick to the syllabus that is a wonderful advice and after that uh, do you think that one can skip a subject and still manage to get good marks uh, in the mains exam or the prelims one must be purely lucky to for that to happen i cannot imagine leaving any subject completely obviously in my first attempt maybe i did not focus that much on medieval history ancient yes i did that some we may not focus that much but i cannot imagine leaving any subject completely because already questions are it's like a questions we, we are not we are unable to expect from where questions are coming and if we leave the subject only it will be disastrous i feel so this yes, uh, because uh, let's say uh, someone would think that i don't want to look at the disaster management uh, rules and disaster management is a very small topic there would be one or two questions i can afford to skip it i don't have the you know required time mains is approaching but 
you have to realize that even though you would manage to skip at one or two questions, but that information would be required in other questions as well. There would be some aspect of geography in GS1 also where it will be required to write that particular uh, you know, disaster management rule guidelines and everything. So uh, it is impossible to skip a subject and believe that even if there are one or two, three questions, I'll manage because there is a possibility that you have prepared very well and you could still could not write good answers to those uh, questions, but it will eventually help you in different questions as well. And uh, even if you write bad answers to it, you'll extract some marks if you've read the syllabus and the uh, topics that are required. So really good for that. And let's move on to interview. Uh, your score was really good for interview. I mean, anything above 180, 185 is a good score for sure. And um, how was your interview experience? If you could tell us about that. So I was very new to this interview. So I have, uh, in school, I gave some interview for some head girl post, I guess. Apart from that, uh, in recent, in engineering, I did not, since, since I did not uh, go for placements, I did not any attend any interview. So when I got selected for the interview, I was very nervous. Uh, but then I, uh, but then I, uh, as usual, I prepared the basic things, DAF, uh, hometown, college, graduation, optional, this basic checklist I completed. And after that, I gave just, I gave very less mocks. I gave three mocks only. I was very particular about mocks also. Like uh, when, first one I gave in like uh, when se senior bureaucrats are there, that uh, mock only I gave so that I can get a uh, proper feedback. Um, and I think uh, the one reason for getting good marks is that uh, I was confident on that day. I was actually very nervous. And I felt I, uh, before I, I felt I was very nervous and I was underprepared. But while entering the UPSC Bhavan itself, I told myself, I can't change the past. Now I can't go and learn so many things. And I also kept in my mind that it's a personality test. Of course, the content matters. But since I can't do, at that point, I can't do anything much. I told myself I should go inside with confidence. And I went and I was very, very honest. And if I didn't know anything, I was humble and accepting. And I told, uh, sorry, I do not know. And uh, my DAF was also, I kept very simple. For each column, I added only one achievement uh, and I did not overdo it in my DAF also. Um, basic interview etiquettes I learned uh, before going to the actual interview. That's so how was the interview on predicted lines? I mean, um, was it based on your educational background, family background, your uh, DAF and your uh, optional subject? Was it on predicted lines or there was something which was out of the blue? Both actually, sir. Uh, in my three mocks I attended, they asked a lot about IR questions since I am a political science and international relations student. But in actual, and now Russia, Pakistan thing also happening, all mocks were based on that. But in actual interview, not even one question asked on that. So in that way, it's unexpected. But then other questions like uh, Telangana bifurcation, uh, those were like someone predicted lines. So it's actually both. And I want to actually tell that uh, the final interview will be very formal. Uh, unlike we see what we see in the YouTube videos, um, mm. they won't uh, ask drill, grill much into your personal questions or something. Or they may ask two, three questions to check your common sense. But then they all are uh, senior officers and um, it will be very formal setup, very much a professional way. So... Mm. That's important. Right. So, uh, this one question came to my mind. Let's say um, if there was a possibility that you could not make it into the list this time, would you have gone for another attempt? And how many? Yes, sir. Uh, I will even no one is sure about results. Sometimes I was very hopeful, like I did okay, I did good in my mains uh, interview, also it was average. So I was hopeful, but um, no one can be sure, even I wasn't sure. Even um, so for this year, we our group exams like TSPSC conducts a, a public service commission of Telangana a gave notification. So uh, on 30 results came, 29, uh, I applied for those group exams. So actually, uh, yeah, the, that it exams is, are there. It's really important months. because uh, although every student has a dream of cracking the civil services exam, but one must be... Uh, you know, in a realistic uh, bent of mind where uh, you should apply for your state civil service exam as well or other subordinate services exam, grab an opportunity, keep working hard and then uh, move on to the next level. 
so there's nothing uh, that uh, you should work only for one particular civil services exam if you don't crack it you don't deserve anything else there's nothing like that be realistic uh, work hard and apply for different exams and as in when you crack a subordinate exam or let's say the state civil services you get the confidence of going for the civil services and uh, you get the motivation and uh, that financial backing when you start getting a salary so that is really important so uh, the reason why i asked you is that i wanted to understand uh, were you only relying on the civil service exam or you would open to uh, other you know, government exams as well for first two years i did not uh, write any exams um, like uh, i did not attempt anything i was only into upsc but then obviously soon i realized i should do something i should uh, settle also it's been 3 years since my graduation and this exam is highly uncertain no one can be sure so i gave gave recently gave that ssc exam also and now i applied for uh, state civil services so it's important for first to i would, i would advise everyone also initially don't uh, divert your mind focus on upsc only but later at some point you need to think of other things also because uh, uh, at this time only we need to settle we can't sit for six attempts into this also but never leave this dream also keep this dream alive and uh, do similar things like state civil services will be mostly similar right so uh, the last question would be how did you uh, you know find samjo and uh, how was your experience working with us if you could tell us about that in brief yes as i said i heavily relied on youtube uh, so when i was searching for geography concepts i found your videos so they were very simple informative and interesting also you you will explain in a calm manner so mm -hmm, they are really interesting and the presentation also so i watched a lot of your geography videos so that was in the initial stage of my preparation and later also i used to revisit once in a while for concepts and after that um, after my second prelims failure i thought maybe i should do something else also that time one of my friends sent me this uh, internship link so i applied and that's how i got this opportunity and so how was nice your experience to... over the last two years because you were working on and off uh, when whenever there was an exam uh, you would focus on your exam then you would come back and till march 2022 you were here before the interview when you got your name into the list uh, for interview then you had to prepare for your interview as well how was your experience over the last two years yes so one year i i consistently worked here so um, during that year since i have to write articles so i had to uh, prepare for that also so i since i wrote uh, diverse articles so all the topics covered in my preparation also in that way it was a uh, very helpful for some those because yes sir yes 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 uh, so yes so that way and uh, since last two years we were very much into this pandemic thing and uh, po exam also postponed so sometimes i got uh, very much bored also so that time this uh, samjo worked helped me to stay in touch with the upsc concepts right so this was the entire discussion that we supposed to have uh, students must derive certain values out of this session that um, you should learn from sasya how a common girl from a common family background only through her sheer determination and hard work can crack this exam she never thought of giving it up she had her options she was totally uh, you know visionary as to how she should approach over the next one year these are the qualities that you should learn because uh, failure is a common aspect of the civil services exam you cannot there are people who crack it in the first attempt itself there are people who would tell you that we just prepared for 2 3 months of our prelims it used to happen in the earlier days but now it has been very really difficult you will have to fail multiple times to be successful eventually you have to be strong like sasya where uh, you deserve to be in the list from the first attempt itself uh, even though uh, she uh, missed out by a whisker she knew what went wrong she had problems with her answer writing she thought it should be more polished she started working on that another challenge came in the way where she failed in csat and then she realized that uh, she will have to work on csat and the answer writing and then at the same time stay in touch with the entire syllabus so that she does not create more problems for her in the next attempt 
and eventually when all the problems were resolved all the dots were connected in the third attempt she managed to do everything properly and if you look at a mark sheet i'll put a blurred screenshot uh, on the screen so that people can understand her marks were consistent it is okay if she believes she scored uh, 10 to 15 marks less in essay but look at her uh, gs 1 2 3 4 score they are totally consistent which means that every year if she prepares in the same way she would have managed to score on similar lines which means that she never skipped a subject which means that she was totally determined as to what she needs to prepare what she needs to skip and how she needs to prepare keeping her foundational concept strong and then building on it this is the easiest and the most reliable approach to crack any exam made be your 12th board exams your university exams or your state civil services your upsc civil services the approach has to be same just treat it as another exam that you would have given somewhere else it could be your mba cat you'll have to prepare in a uniform way step by step and then keep on building on it this is a that is the reason why i wanted to have this session with sachin because i knew this For the last two years, that she has been building her uh, entire preparation strength to strength, and these type of examples uh, from candidates like Sasya show you how you need to prepare going forward in the upcoming year or the next two years. That uh, you'll have to stay strong, keep it simple, and one thing at a time. Don't rush it. Don't run after random toppers guidance. faculty is telling you do this and you'll be able to uh, crack the exam there's no clear solution the only simple and effective solution is to do it in a simple and effective manner identify your mistakes and work on them no other way would be effective for the masses it would help one or two or maybe 20 people one different uh, in out of the blue uh, strategy but the common strategy would always help the masses that is why we wanted to have sasya in this session because a simple strategy can do such wonders that she got a rank that most people only aspire for and if you do the same working on your mistakes i'm sure one day or the other you would achieve what you want in your life so sasya extremely happy for your rank and very very thankful to you that uh, you decided to come to the sanjos talk show and uh, i feel honored that you work for us that uh, you talk to me over this session and i wish you all the best for your uh, future endeavors and i am very hopeful that in future you'll turn out to be a very good civil servant a very uh, you know respected full of integrity and honest civil servant and because these are the qualities that uh, have helped you achieve this feat uh, getting good marks in interview as well your personality was deserving enough and you've been deserving over the last 3 years and finally god has helped you with the rank that you wanted thank you and uh, thank you. all the best for all the future things and may god bless you thank you sir right so this is where we end the video and uh, see you in the next one next episode next topper and hopefully you'll gain some value out of the next episode as well see you in the next video thank you